All right, with good eyes on KwaZulu-Natal, we have our reporters fanned out across the province monitoring any developments with regards to protests in that area, in various areas in the province. You saw what happened last night. We'll bring you some of the visuals, remind you of what took place uh, last night. We have Ayanda Mtlongo just outside the escort correctional facilities where uh, Mr. Jacob Zuma is uh, being held. We also have Jed Lee Poulter on, along the N3. We heard from the N3 toll concession, Tanya Dugra, operation managers, they're saying, confirming that about 23 trucks uh, were set light, including uh, a tanker. Uh, so we will get you the very live, these are live visuals now. That's where Jed Lee Poulter is reporting from. So this is uh, some of the earlier footage that she supplied to us. Stand by, we're going to get back to her in a short while. We're also monitoring scenes in the Durban CBD. Mloni Khadebe is there live. There you see him on your screen. We'll come back to him. We're getting all angles of the story right here on SABC News. I want to bring in now Jacob Zuma Foundation spokesperson uh, Mzwane Limani uh, to the conversation. He joins us now live. Sir, thank you very much indeed for your time. Uh, good morning, Blaine, and good morning to all the viewers of SABC. Firstly, the, what's your reaction? What's the Foundation's reaction to what's, what we are witnessing in KwaZulu-Natal at the moment? Well, a couple of things. Firstly, the Foundation wants to be contextual. And the first thing we want to condemn is the fact that the CJ Zondo did not use all the remedies in his disposal to deal with the matter relating to President Zuma. We want to condemn the fact that as we speak here and now, the, re the recusal application has still not been dispensed with. We want to condemn the fact that the Constitutional Court decided to be a court of first instance and by so doing, deny President Zuma his rights of appeal and all other rights as enshrined in Section 35. So we are where we are now because of all that uh, uh, injustice that has happened within the side of the authorities. So in terms of what's happening in KZN, uh, the foundation has got a very clear point of view here that uh, the Russia's anger of the people is because of the injustices that they see uh, being uh, dispensed to President Zuma. Uh, people may not be lawyers, uh, they may not wear all the black and the red robes and the green robes, but they're not stupid. They can see when injustice is being done. Uh, what has happened to President Zuma, the very first person in the democratic South Africa to be jailed without trial is a travesty of justice. So the, this anger that you see has been instigated by the authorities. We call upon the authorities to desist with their violent uh, sentence. We call upon the constitutional court to use Monday as a, a day of reflection and take the opportunity to take the country out of this misery and rescind this uh, unconstitutional and unlawful sentencing of a person without and uh, judging a person without a fair trial. Mr. Mani, this is what has caused all of this problem. Quick follow ups with regards to what you just said now. I just seen a statement from the KZN government. It reads verbatim It is believed that those behind the protests are people that are opposed to the incarceration of former President of the Republic, His Excellency Jacob Zuma. That's what the statement says. You accept that? Yes, indeed. They, right. are, they are opposed the to second, the injustice right. that has been meted out. The second part of the question would be, is the foundation, from what I'm hearing from you, is the foundation condoning what is being, what is what we're experiencing currently in KwaZulu-Natal? The foundation is against selective morality. The foundation is against... What, is, what does that mean? What, what does that mean, sir? What is selective morality? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting to it. Selective morality is, uh, is the media and everybody else not seeing anything wrong with a man being sentenced to jail without a trial. And nobody is asking that. And, 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 and all of a sudden, when people are, people are provoked and when the Russia's anger is uh, being uh, unleashed, and then you start to see something wrong with people responding uh, to a vicious sentence, people responding to apartheid-like kind of sentencing. We thought we're through this. So people are saying uh, that uh, they thought that uh, by having a new government, by having a democratic government, we are past apartheid. But instead, 
we are thrust into West apartheid. In apartheid, it was just detention without trial. Here, it's not just detention, it's incarceration without trial. Serious travesty of justice. So people are, are, are responding to that. If you want anything to stop, right. stop provoking the people. Look, I, I do not want to, at this stage, look, investigations will continue with regards to the torching, the burning of trucks. So I do not, I just want to state that categorically, want to infer that those trucks were set alight by people who support the former president. That's not what I'm saying. With regards to what we are seeing, though, the setting of trucks alight, would the, would the foundation condemn that? At, like I said before, the foundation condemns the vicious, uh, the vicious and unlawful sentencing of President Zuma. No, Mr. Mani, it's, 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 it's the, 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 question, the, the, the question is with regards to what we've been seeing in KwaZulu-Natal, the torching of the trucks. We're getting reports from the N3 toll concession that 23 trucks were set alight. Does the foundation condemn such acts? The foundation is a foundation that supports justice. And the foundation is very clear that what has happened to President Zuma is not justice. The foundation thinks it's not justice to be talking about what's happening to uh, the economic situation of those trucks without uh, reflecting on the injustice that has been done to President Zuma. I'm, I'm just it's wondering. I'm point. just wondering why is it hard for for you to condemn uh, as as the spokesperson for the foundation what is happening in terms of these setting alight of the trucks? Just help me understand why. Yes. The, the foundation is the Jacob Zuma Foundation. Mm. Uh, we are here to represent the interests of President Zuma. Uh, and the interests of President Zuma have not been served by a vicious sentence in a cold winter, 75-year-old man to detain without trial. This is the problem. And this is, where we, that this is why we are here today. So I'm here to talk about President Zuma. Yeah. Why is President Zuma sentenced to jail term without trial? That is the issue. How, from the foundation's point of view, Mr. Mani, how do you think that the temperature, the tension can be brought down at this stage in the province? It's very simple. It's very simple. It, it, it is important for people to understand that the uh, people of South Africa have signed up for the constitution that we have. The constitution itself is very clear on this matter. Section 12.1b prohibits detention without trial. Why did the Concord violate that section of the Constitution? Section 35 of the Constitution is very clear about the rights of alleged criminals. As it were, I mean, murderers, robbers, rapists, all of those people, they get a fair trial. Why is it that, what is it that Presuma has done to deny him the rights that, are get, that get given to robbers, the rights that get given to killers? Why is President Zuma not given this? Mm. So people of South Africa are responding to the unlawfulness, uh, to the sentence that is not consistent with the constitution of this country. This is why people are revolting. So for this to stop, lawlessness must, uh, lawfulness must prevail in the constitutional court. Concord judges must not act above the constitution. What they have done is their own discretion mm. that is above the constitution. Constitution does not allow them to do what they've done. Has they must self-correct and uh, and apply the constitution verbatim. How is the how is President Zuma doing? Uh, has the foundation been in contact? Have you been in contact with him uh, since his incarceration? The foundation is very worried about the health and the well-being of President Zuma. It's a cold weather. 79-year-old man sitting in the cold cells. What, I mean, it's an obvious answer. We are very worried that his health is going to deteriorate at a rapid rate. And we shudder to think what would happen uh, if uh, this uh, health condition continues to deteriorate. So what has happened to President Zuma is not helping his health conditions at all. He is a man of comorbidities. And this incarceration is terrible for him both physically and psychologically. This is a freedom fighter who fought for the liberation of South Africa. For him, at 79 years old, 
to be jailed by a democratic dispensation must be killing the man. So we're very worried uh, that uh, uh, this thing is, uh, is ravaging his health. The rescission application being heard on Monday. Your expectation, sir? We expect, in fact, we call upon the Constitutional Court to self to self uh, correct. We call upon the Constitutional Court to respect the feelings of the people on the ground. We call upon the Constitutional Court to implement the Constitution as written, not as opinions uh, and all other fancy things that they want to infer on the Constitution. The Constitution of this country has not been written for lawyers, has been written for the people of South Africa. When we, ordinary men and women on the streets, read the Constitution, we can see very clearly Section 12.1b, uh, uh, of the Constitution is very clear that uh, detention without trial is wrong. Section 35 is very clear of the rights of people. And we are saying President Zuma has been denied all of this. So all we are calling for is not a favor. All we are calling for is not pity. All we are calling for is the justice. This is all, all we are calling for. Justice must prevail. What has happened to President Zuma is not a semblance of justice. And therefore, there will be no peace in South Africa as long as President Zuma is jailed under conditions which are unjust. This must be reversed by this constitutional court. Are you going to visit the former president anytime soon? Is he allowed any visitors? At this point, he's on what they call 14-day isolation. Mm. We did try to go to President Zuma, uh, but we were turned at the gate. Uh, because of 14-day uh, 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 isolation, all processes of the prison. Mm -hmm. But indeed, uh, I must be fair to prison officials that uh, a lawyer, uh, right now it's only select people, also only select people, select people can visit him, uh, like lawyers and so on. Uh, but uh, at this point, uh, uh, we have not received any bad uh, reports, uh, as it were. But we're just worried that uh, uh, this uh, incarceration must be ravaging his health. What do you make of those pictures that were leaked and doing its rounds on social media? We have taken a decision here at the SABC not to show those pictures of President Zuma, uh, former President Zuma. What's the foundation's take on that? In fact, the foundation is consulting uh, lawyers on that matter. Because, in fact, even in terms of the Popia Act that has just come through now, uh, what has happened is a, is a violation of the law. So, indeed, the Correctional Services Facility has broken the law by that uh, happening. In the first place, who, who took President Zuma's pictures without his consent? And this has happened in the prison precinct, uh, as it were. And the issue for us is that the person that took that picture uh, the, and it's, it's through the window. So if you, could took, if you could take that picture through the window, you could shoot a gun through that window. The same amount of time and effort it takes to take a picture is the same amount of effort to squeeze a trigger uh, on a gun. So we're even worried about the safety of President Zuma. If people can take pictures of him, they can shoot him. So we're worried that uh, uh, President Zuma might just uh, be killed in this process. We're very worried about it. Uh, and uh, we are uh, speaking to the lawyers uh, to check what are the rights and what needs to happen uh, to remedy the situation. We appreciate that the SAPC is not uh, flashing those pictures around. In fact, we think it could very well be a campaign to humiliate President Zuma. A lot of haters in this country want to see him in, in uh, uh, those orange overalls. This is what they want to see. So they can't wait to see him wearing those uh, orange overalls, these haters. So we, 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 we call upon society to stop being hateful. And we call upon prison uh, officials to ensure that the safety of President Zuma is not compromised. And what we've seen so far is not helping, uh, our, 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 is not helping our, our, our state of mind because we think that President Zuma is not in as protected as he should be. I'm Zonele Mani, JG Zuma Foundation. Sir, you're always welcome to make the argument on this platform. We thank you very much indeed for your time. No doubt we'll touch base with you shortly, uh, very soon, to get an update on President, former President Jacob Zuma. Thank you. Thank you very much. And also, let me use this opportunity again to just call upon media 
to stop harassing President Zuma family and asking them how they are and all of that is an obvious thing. The family is grieving. Can they please leave President Zuma's family alone and let them deal with this uh, tragedy in privacy? Mr. Nelimani, JG Zuma Foundation, thank you.